Hey guys. Hi. Hello. Hi. Um, is there anyone here that would be interested in talking on camera in a live stream for like five minutes about why you believe in God? You want, does anyone even want to give it a shot? I'm okay. I won't be in your face and I'm not going to call you stupid or anything like that. I just really want to understand why you believe it. Do I have to talk for five minutes? You want to talk more? Or like, what if it's like shorter? Like oh. Sometimes I just like, my mind goes like... Oh, honestly, I mean, there's, whatever. I, I just do five just to respect your time because you're usually heading off to class, so... Can we like buddy up? We could, but um, what usually happens is that uh, as I have a conversation... Just so you guys know, I'm recording and live streaming. Hi. Hi. Can I? Okay, I'll just put it up. Um, what's up, man? Hey, what's up? Good to see you again. Miguel? Good to see you too, yeah. Yes, good to see you. What's up, honey? Anthony. Your, uh, Anthony. Anthony. Yes. Anthony. I, just, I, I thought that we were there now. <laughs> what I was telling, um, what is your name? Lindsay. Lindsay, okay. When I have a group like this, it's very difficult to have a one-on-one -on -one because it's, such a, it's usually such a fascinating topic and people just want to jump in on it and then it throws it off a little bit. Or like, I find that they may say an answer that influences yours and it kind of biases it. So. Um, I've done like two people at once, like interviewed them, uh -huh. but it's better honestly if it's just a one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. And it's not like I'm trying to, you know, trick you or throw you off or anything like that. Um, I've talked to Miguel before. You can vouch for me, right? Yeah. Okay. If you change your mind and you want to do a one-on-one, -on -one, um, I'm going to move maybe over there because usually the signal gets blocked where I'm standing yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it for? <clears throat> I have a hobby where I talk to believers. Oh, really? Yes, ma'am. Yeah. Wow. And I, I've been coming to this campus off and on for like a year, probably. Okay. And I've talked to Kyle. Yeah. Uh, we actually sat down and talked for like an hour yeah. on oh, camera. Like, it was that. great. And he was I've like, this it. is the best conversation. Yeah. He, was, he just loved it. But, oh, um, cool. yeah. I love running into people that are hardcore believers yeah. because I'm fascinated why you hold the beliefs that you do mm. and I want to understand why and by, I just ask questions usually just just I'm not telling you what to think mm. you're just trying to get a feel for it exactly yeah, yeah. so if that's something that you'd love to do I've already interviewed maybe well I've interviewed her I can't remember her name Shelby what is it Olivia no no uh, the one with the glasses Krista? Krista, I've interviewed uh, Craig over there, okay. um, and of course Miguel over here. So, uh, uh, yeah, no you, do you want to give it a go? Sure. Okay. Um, would you mind if we moved yeah. over there? Okay. I actually, have, I have like 30 minutes before my class starts, so I don't okay. have a lot of time either. What are you studying? Christian classics. Oh, really? Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. What is your name? I'm Kayla. K A Y. L A. Okay. My name is Anthony. Nice to meet you. And I'll just time it for five. Like I mentioned there, I, I just want to understand why people believe what they believe. Because they're, they're so passionate about it. Right. Do you, have you ever thought about why you hold this belief in, in the God? And Well, you kind of put it the way you said, you know, we are passionate about it. And it's mostly because Christ is very passionate about us. Um, mostly in the sense that uh, in the Christian faith, what... What we believe is that God became man and dwelt among us for 30, 35 years. Can I get a little closer? Yeah, definitely. Okay, just, just for, uh, so for, we can hear like your voice. For the camera, sorry. Yeah, I'm yeah. really quiet. Um, Christ only dwelt on earth for about 30, 35 years as far as we know in terms of like the way history works. And while he was here, he was set the example for us. And it, it's an interesting idea for me. I've only been a Christian for one year. Really? And, yeah, only one year. Um, I got saved last September, so I'm I'm almost at my year mark. But did you not believe in any God prior to being saved? You know, when I was a kid, I went in and out of it just because yeah. that seemed to be the social norm was uh, I'm Christian America. Uh, sure, I'll believe it. And when I got older into high school, I started thinking I don't think so. I don't really believe in Jesus. Uh, maybe there's a God out there. Maybe there's a higher power. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until I came to college, it was my sophomore year, that someone in Chi Alpha reached out to me and was like, hey, do you want to be my friend? The same group you're in now? The same group, yeah. Wow. So they found me 
I ended up going to a service and I was like, okay, this is weird. Uh, they got their hands in the air, they're praising God, and yeah. I just... I've been to one of their services. Yeah, I was yeah. just really curious. I was interested. Well, let me and ask you, I mean, there's a Muslim group on campus. Uh -huh. uh, did you consider going to them and, and no, going to them? No, you there? know, I... It's weird. I think I've always just kind of been conditioned to think about Christianity. But I have... That's interesting. When I was in high school, I did kind of... I don't want to call it experimenting, because I never actually, like, practiced different faiths, but I did learn about them. And I sought them out, and I, you know, looked into Buddhism, Hinduism, tried to understand, you know, why Judaism is different from Christianity. Yeah. And and even now, I'm still kind of studying those things, so I know what other people believe, and I can understand, you know, in the same way that you're studying Christians, is how how are they thinking about, you know, eternity and about about what higher power there is. You mentioned that you felt that you were possibly conditioned to think about Christianity do you think when that, I was younger yes do you think that that had any impact on you deciding to to definitely join not. these guys no definitely not what, what was, I it was about, actually afraid of Chi Alpha what was, was the, like they're Christian what was it about their doctrine or what they told you that made you think that was actually true it wasn't Chi Alpha's doctrine it's it's God's doctrine what's the main thing that you read or you heard that was like oh this is true I went to a conference with Chi Alpha. They, it's called Breakaway, and we do it every September. And hmm. it's a collection of just people, and we listen to sermons, and we have you know lessons that people teach. And while I was there, I honestly I had an encounter with Christ Himself, like a, a moment where I knew it was Him, and I knew that that I was never going to be the same after it. And even and from then on, I've had moments where I've, I've known it was Him. And, you had an encounter with Jesus mm -hmm. at this conference? Definitely. Called Breakaway? Yes. It sounds kind of surreal. How did you know it was Jesus and not your own desire or your the conditioning that you mentioned before? It's hard to say. Honestly, um, my, only, my only response is that it's faith. Just our soul. Uh, in the words of A.W. Tozer, our soul knows its source. It knows you know, the original creator, it knows where we belong. And a lot of the world will kind of train us to, to start ignoring that and start treating it as, oh, it's just, you know, that little voice in the back of your head telling you, hey, don't do that, or maybe you should do that. Do you use faith to be confident that it's Jesus that talked to you that day? Absolutely. We've got 30 seconds okay. more before the time runs out. Sure. Can we just quickly discuss what your definition of faith is? Okay. Um, how, how could you define faith? I want to say faith in basic form is just believing wholeheartedly in something or someone. Like, undeniably. Undeniably believing in something or someone. Right. In, in my case, it's Jesus. Yeah. That was five. Do you have like, time for two more minutes? Yeah, totally. Okay. Undeniably believing in something or someone. Mm -hmm. Do you undeniably believe in something or someone other than Jesus? No. I, I believe that Jesus is the only king and God. And you use faith, and you use faith to get to that conclusion. I do. I use faith. I use what I've experienced, what I've encountered. Um, but when I, well, when I asked you about the experience, uh -huh. <clears throat> I think you'd mentioned that it was faith that <clears throat> that encouraged me. Yeah. Yeah. So if if you let me ask you this. So yeah, I see what you mean. It kind of sounds like a circular argument. No, 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 not okay. no. Um, it, it seems to me, and correct me if I'm wrong here. Okay. I don't want to put words in your mouth. Sure. Uh, You were conditioned to think about Christianity, but you went to this conference and you, you felt Jesus come into your life. Mm -hmm. And when I asked you, well, how do you know it's Jesus? You said, well, it's faith. And so it seems to me that maybe faith is the foundation on which you're building the other stuff. Probably. If you lowered, if, if we met three more times, yeah. Kayla, and you lowered your confidence 
in the reliability of faith. Okay. Let me just start with this. Would you be willing to lower your confidence in the reliability of faith? What do you are, mean? are you open to unpacking faith a little bit to see if it's as reliable as you think that it is? Okay. So like looking at like concrete evidence or... Maybe not even going so far as that. Okay. I guess what I'm trying to drive at is, if we met three more times, yeah. and you walked away from the third conversation, the fourth conversation, thinking, "Wow, faith is not a reliable way to get to a truth." Okay. If that happened, right. would you lower your confidence in this belief that Jesus exists? No. Even if I took the faith aspect away, you know, the, the blind faith that I, I want to believe, I, I've learned enough in the year that I've, you know, been pursuing Christ that, and seeing Him work in other people's lives specifically, like not just mine, but in other people, and the way He changes them. You see this God working in those other people's lives just like you saw Jesus working in your life the day that he revealed himself to you at the conference? And he's always, always working. Are you not using faith to know that that's really happening in those situations? It's possible that I am. What else is there besides faith? Do you want to keep talking? It's up to you. I want to, I want to help you out. What else is there besides faith? I'm going to repeat this back. Okay. If if you walked away from this conversation yeah. even, or even, like I said, we met a couple more times, yeah. and you discovered that faith isn't a reliable method to getting to the truth. Okay. If it, this isn't true, let me know. Okay. But it sounds like you admit that everything that you're basing this belief on comes to faith. Okay. What else is there but faith, I think you said. Right. If you were to discover that faith isn't so reliable, mm -hmm. would you lower your confidence in the accuracy of this belief? Realistically, probably. If someone had come to me and was able to, to shake my faith, I think it would, it would probably affect the worldly part of me the human part of me, but I'm not just a human shell. I mean, I have a God-given soul, and I think that part of me would respond in that I know that this is true. This other side of you, this you have this human side and then this, I don't mm. spiritual or yeah. supernatural. Yeah. Um, if we found out that that side of you right. is also resting on this foundation on faith. of faith, okay. because it's all, what else is there but faith? Right, so this is breaking down that it's not about faith. If we if okay. we spent time together, okay. I know it sounds weird because you don't even know me, and I'm like right. 20 years older than you, but if we met here on this campus, just like we're doing now, right. and you were to discover that faith is not reliable, mm -hmm. would you lower your confidence in this belief that you've latched onto right now? Every part of me wants to say no. I want to say no. And maybe Is it an honest answer? It's the only answer that's really coming out of me. I want to say the I'm trying to process my thoughts so it's understandable. Sure, sure. I um a lot of times, I can feel the rest of the world trying to convince me that Christ isn't real and that you're just believing it because you want to believe it. And part of it is that. I do want to believe. I, I want to believe that there's someone out there. But, and I might be naive because I've only been a Christian one year and I might be undereducated. Um, underprepared, maybe overzealous, but I honestly will stand by Christ for the rest of my life. Kayla, before we go, I, I want to get an idea of where you are. If you can think about, before we started this conversation, okay. 
on a scale from zero to a hundred. Okay. okay. Zero is, I have no confidence that Jesus exists right. and it's all doubt. Sure. Hundred percent is, I have all confidence that Jesus exists and there's okay. no doubt. Okay. And you could be anywhere on the scale or if you don't like the scale, we don't have to do the scale. Okay. But where do you think that you would put yourself? 100. And at the end of this conversation right now, mm -hmm. where would you put yourself? I'm still at that 100. Okay. If you and I were to talk sure. and completely eviscerate yeah. the reliability of faith. Right. To just strip that away. Would you be willing to move down? On the scale? On the scale to the 1% mark. The one percent. No. Where would you feel know. comfortable? I kind of have to think about that, actually. Because the only way I know how to express my faith is that that it is faith. And if we take that away, then we're kind of taking away everything I have. And if that scenario were to happen and then probably I don't know that's hard only because I don't know I know that there's so much more to it than just that I know there's more than just faith but I'm not really quite sure what more there is I know that you did say that you know what else is there besides faith right and that really that, that, jump, that jumped out at me mm -hmm. If it is all faith, right. and we walked away from those conversations with you realizing that faith is unreliable, okay. would there be any reason to hold on to the belief at that point, for you right now at least? Like if, if faith was the only thing. Let's say, let's say let's say we literally I skipped my class. Yeah. We went to lunch. Okay. All right, and we had another hour conversation. Right. And at the end of that hour conversation. And this is quite likely that could actually happen. Right. That you could completely lower your confidence in the reliability of faith. Okay. To the point where you would maybe even wonder why you even thought it was reliable in the first place. Okay. Would you be willing to sit down with me and do that? I actually have to go to work. I've got a class too. Okay. This cool. is more hypothetical. Okay. okay. In hypothetical, yeah, probably. Okay. I would. Um, I think so. Do you know that there are other communities of people that have no faith? Yeah. They don't absolutely. use faith to get yeah. to beliefs. There's a group here on campus okay. that does it. Uh, it's a secular student alliance. So, okay. just like you found a group here. Yeah. There are other groups of people that have asked themselves these same questions yeah. and found community. Right. Okay? okay, so there is a safety net for people that realize that faith isn't reliable. Mm -hmm. um, so I just want to throw that out there okay. so that you're not just, well, where do I go now okay. type of thing. I've got a, biz a card okay. uh, with my email on it. Sure. And if you want to meet again, we can even, like I said, we can even meet for lunch or meet here or whatever. Okay. I can even leave the cameras behind uh, if you want. but. I find no other discussion more important than the one that we just had. Okay. And I thank you very much for your time. Of course, thank you. I really appreciate it, Kayla.